This is the day that the Lord has made. We continue to rejoice and be glad throughout this day. Yes, as we quoted last Sunday, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Hallelujah. Because this life, no, this life, this body, and everything in this life and in this body has already been offered to the Father in accordance with Romans 12 verse 1. No? We offered our bodies as a living sacrifice. Because of that, we belong to Him. Hallelujah. And we are now duty-bound to live this life every day. You know, pleasing the Lord. Live this life as a worship unto the Lord. Expressing worship, praise, thanksgiving, adoration to the Lord in everything that we do. Let this life be full of joy and peace and hope and gladness. Amen. Because this life belongs to the Lord. When we offer our bodies unto the Lord, according to Romans 12, 1, it says in the last line, this is your true, this is your spiritual act of worship. This is your true and proper worship. That's what he's saying in the another version. This is your true and proper worship. Hmm. True and proper worship begins by offering our life and our body as a living sacrifice and a God. In contrast to the dead sacrifices in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there was no living sacrifice. All sacrifices are dead. <laughs> they have to kill the sacrifices. Burn them. And no, in the New Testament, if we offer this body, dead to the world, but alive unto God, so that God can use this body. God can use this life for the glory of His name. Amen. God has done everything that's needed to be done. So we can become an asset in the kingdom of God. And if we fail to be an asset, it's not God's problem. It is your problem. <laughs> because God is, is doing everything. He has done everything. He's still doing everything. He needs to do to bring you to that level of maturity. So that you don't remain a child of God. But you become a man of God. A servant of God. Ready to be used by Him. Fruitful and useful in His kingdom. Amen. Today our lesson, we proceed with chapter 5. I jump over so several verses in the fourth chapter because all of those were just explanations using different analogies by Paul. But the whole idea is to help them realize that they need to mature, you know, until the fullness of Christ be seen in them. Until they're able to manifest the fullness of Christ through their, through their life. Because they have become mature, they now can live the life of Jesus every day. They now can do the works of Jesus. They can use the authority of Jesus properly. Amen. They will be totally dependent on the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ Jesus in them. Hallelujah. And now in chapter 5, verse 1, this is what it says. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. He has set us free so that we can beat truly free in walking with him in living this life every day it should be a life lived in freedom freedom from fear from sin from devil freedom from compromises freedom from worry freedom from anxiety you know all the kinds of freedom that brings glory to the father is ours now through christ jesus it is for freedom that christ has set us free how did he set us free he paid the price for our redemption. Amen. By laying down his life, by shedding his precious blood on the cross for us. That's how he set us free. And then our obligation is stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Kitagaan na kang kagawasan. Magbarog na kang aligon karon kay gitagaan na kagkagawasan, ayaw nagsugot nga maulipon ka pag-usab sa ulipon, nga sa, sa yugo sa pagkaulipon. Hmm. It's really foolishness when you have already been set free and then you return to bondage on your own, on purpose. May, that's, that's foolishness. That only goes to show you lose your mind. Hmm. 
common sense is no longer there. See? Because once you are set free, you are supposed to live that life in freedom. Once you are saved from drowning, you are supposed to live that life now. <laughs> On the land, not in the water. Amen. Do not let yourself be burdened again by yoke of slavery. You are no longer under any rule or regulation, especially with regards to religious ceremonies, rituals, you know, and etc. Washing of feet, you know, watch the day. You have to observe the day, observe the month of special celebration, you know. No. You are free. Hallelujah. Even when you are giving, you know, when you talk about giving, you are, you have the freedom to give. Mm. Your giving is not limited to 10% or 1%. Let the Spirit God lead you or guide you <laughs> in giving. And be obedient. Sometimes He will prompt you to give this much, this much, this much. <laughs> Sometimes He will tell you, seal your car, give it to someone else. Sell your house, surrender it to the church. Those are some very crazy things that crazy things that the Holy Spirit might prompt you to do. Because you now live a worry-free life. There is no fast rule that you must follow to maintain your being a child of the Father. Now, you have been made free, live that life in freedom. Stand firm in that freedom. Do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery you know hallelujah you know one yoke of slavery that has burdened the people of god wala ta kabantay ana no kanang magsimbag kada domingo <laughs> you know yoke of slavery domingo ra bagyo di ta magsimba di ba di ta makasimba lunes martes miyerkules webes hapon gabi you see in the past, you feel so convicted, you feel condemned when you cannot go to church on Sundays. And if you fail to go and attend service on Sunday, the following day, the pastor is there at their door knocking, asking, why are you not able to attend the service yesterday? Don't you know that it is the day of the Lord? <laughs> and so you become remorseful full of guilt but today we know better uh, all the days belongs to the lord not only sunday all the days you know the devil has not made any day he has not created any day one day of his own no it's not only sunday that the lord's day monday is the lord's day tuesday is the lord's day wednesday is the lord's day Thursday is the Lord's Day. Friday is the Lord's Day. They just name it to some God, foreign God in the past. But the truth of the matter is every day, all the days, belongs to the Lord. Because He's the only creator of heaven and earth. Everything there is belongs to Him. He created them all. The devil has not created anything. He just stole them. If He has something in His possession, He stole them for sure. Because He's not a creator. See? So now the Lord has set you free. Live in the freedom. You're free to worship the Lord anytime, in whatever manner. You know? In the Old Testament, there were prescribed ways to worship God. There was a prescribed day to worship the Lord. There was a prescribed place to worship God. Hmm. In the New Testament, starting in the day of Pentecost, there's none. Every day is a day of worship. What has been announced in advance to some of the Old Testament people like Abraham and the others, like the writer of the psalmist, you know? Because it was to them shown by God in advance that there is a day and a time that's coming that those who will worship the Father will, will no longer worship them on a particular day or a particular place with a particular procedure or program 
they will instead worship the Father in spirit and in truth because these are the kind of worshipers that the Father is seeking. Hallelujah. Amen. So do not be yoked with slavery. You might be asking, how about if we still continue to worship Sunday? Is that true? Of course not. <laughs> For as long as you do it in the spirit and in truth, cannot be wrong. Whether you do it on Monday or Tuesday or Sunday or whatever, morning or noon or evening, no, cannot be wrong. What makes it wrong is when your spirit is wrong. That's what it makes it wrong. So let's proceed in verse number two. Mark my words. Mark my words or remember my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, Paul returns to this topic because as already mentioned, there were a group of so-called Judaizers. You know, these were Jewish people who purpose of purportedly embraced Christ and yet they were imposing their opinions, religious opinions on the new believers, wanting them to, to abide by the Jewish rules like circumcision, like, you know, keeping the Sabbath, like keeping the dietary laws, do not eat this, do not eat that, Things like those. Hmm. And Paul was telling the people in the Christians in Galicia, uh, I tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Because that would mean you have returned to the yoke of bondage. Hmm. Do not return to the yoke of bondage. Verse number 3, Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. If you obey one law, then you are obligated to obey the whole law. Let me read first the whole until verse uh, 15. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. But by faith, we eagerly await through the Spirit the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor our circumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You were running a good race who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth. That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion will pay the penalty, whoever he may be. Brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So if you notice, the whole Paul argument of Paul is centered on the result, the expected result of the coming of Christ. When, when Christ comes into your life, then you receive freedom. You receive reconciliation back to the Father. True sonship comes upon you. The full rights of being a son of God, a child of God, a daughter of God is on you. The spirit of adoption also begins to live inside of you. You have now full standing before the Father. Uh, you have full standing, a full right as well at the same time. Full authority, the same authority. You are an heir, equal heir with Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of that, you are no longer bound by any law. You are free because you are a child of God. Huh? 
Ibalik-balik na ni Pablo, no? You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another. Serve one another in love. Do not use your freedom to, to indulge the sinful nature. Ayaw gamita ang kagawasan nimo aron pauyunan ang makasasala nimo nga kinaiyahan. Do not give in to the sinful nature, the sinful flesh. The clamor of the flesh should be cut always. So that the flesh is always uh, deprived sa iyang clamor, sa iyang complaints. Mahilig man mo reklamo ko ng flesh. Kapoy man, goto man, pangit na ninglingkuranan. Because the flesh always wants to live the easy life. But he is no longer the boss. Jesus is now the boss. We are no longer out under the law. We are under the spirit of living God. And we are here to live our lives for the glory of the Father. So, hallelujah. In verse number 6, In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. That's the only thing that counts. Amen. Ang bala o dula na siya, give back kung tanaw ni mo. It is faith expressing itself in love. Pagtuo nga nagpakita, nga makita, diha sa gugma. Action. Compassion, helping one another, kindness, generosity, things like those. You know, dapat na mo na siya. The freedom, the result of freedom, the result of the Spirit God coming into a person's life. There is something here that Paul mentioned in verse nine: a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. Most of the time when yeast is used in scriptures, it is used in a negative sense. Mm. Ano siya? Gamay nga yeast, gamay nga igpatubo, maapiktuhan niya ang tibuok nga minasa. Paul is using this as an argument to strongly establish that as a Christian who has received freedom from the Lord, do not allow any compromises in your life. Do not allow sin because sin is like a yeast. It will affect the whole batch of dog. Hmm. Piktuhan niya. Hmm. Sala ra ba kayo mag-produce naglaing sala niya mag-anam kadako. <laughs> Ana, kanang pamutbot, pamakak, tanawan ng pamakak, mag-anam kadako, mag-anam kadako. Ana, tanawan ng mga ngingilad, mag-anam mo kadako. Hmm. Mao na ang nature sa sala. Tanawa, tanawa ng mga nagahimog crime, mag-anam ka dako na. Kana mga mangawat, primero, piso, sinsilyo lang na. Kadugan, tibuok na. Kadugan, libo na. Karoon, bangko na. Hold up on. Tulisun. Mag-anam siya ka dako. Ngunang patyon siya ang sala. Sunugon siya sa miling dugo ni Jesus. Isurrender siya dito. Kinulsulan siya o maayon. Kay dili ni mo yung anaon. Mag-anam siya ka dako until it will swallow you. But Christ has already set us free. We do not belong anymore to the law nor to the flesh. We have no obligation to the flesh. We have to live our lives in freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. Live our lives in freedom. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the summary of the law. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So, love your neighbor as yourself is the summary of the law. No? Di ba ang, ang Ten Commandments na nabahin men sa duha? No? Ang first nga three ka commandments is may tungod sa Diyos. No? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then, ang, from the fourth to the Ten Commandments, 
it's manward na siya, no? Horizontal na siya. Di ba? No? Uh, now, let me go through again. The first four. Ah, ang, kay ang ikaw pat, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy man na siya, no? So, kana siya is still God ward siya, God ward. And then from the fifth to the tenth commandment is to man to man na siya. Kaya nga, pag summarize niya, summarize lang niya sa love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Mga na siya ang summary sa ten commandments. Na karidiri, iya lang ganing giusa, no? Gi-emphasize, manggod niya din ni the horizontal nga effect no sa imuhang pagtuo sa imong gugma love your neighbor as yourself the entire law is summed up in a single command love your neighbor as yourself if you keep on biting and devouring each other watch out and you will be destroyed by each other and the simple reason for this one is what na niya gimension tong love god with all heart soul mind and strength kasi ang emphasis mo din ni trabaho no ang pagtuo nimo ma-express sa in practical action mm -mm. And because it will be expression practical action, ang beneficiary sa practical action ni mo ang mga tao. Dili ang ginoo. Asya. Dili ang ginoo. So, love your neighbor as yourself. Pag sundo na ni mo, makabenefit na ang neighbor ni mo. Dad, ni mo gulay. Magsagobang tubig. Silhigan ni mo ang iyong tungkaran. Tabangan ni mo siya sa iyong labhunon. So, siya ang beneficiary no sa imo hang pag-express sa imong gugma pinaagi sa buhat expressing yourself your faith in love ang pagtuo nimo i-express nimo sa aksyon no sa gugma gug action tinukmod sa gugma mana siya you exercise your freedom also at the same time no na kay freedom to do that nobody is actually imposing his opinion or will on you But you and the Lord, nagkasinabot nga mo na ang imong waton. Express your faith in the Lord by helping someone, by doing household chores for them for free, things like those. And you are motivated by love. It is the love of God and the love for the people of God that is governing your life. That's how you live your life. Amen? Na? Mana pariyan na sa kanang ginahisgutan gani na ako sa inyo ba mga isyo, no? Na, halimbawa, magtrabaho ka, nagtrabaho ka, wala sa, dili tungod sa kwarta, nagtrabaho ka because you love your neighbor. You love to serve them, you love to bless them. God has blessed you with skills, no? Skill ni mo, panggupit, ang skill ni mo, ang ayog, mga masakyanan. Gibless ka na ni Lord and you love your neighbor, so servisyo ani mo sila. Ah, ang ang kwarta, ibog madawat gikan kanila pakapin na lang na siya. That's the bonus. The money that they will give to you because of your service is a bonus. That is why when you when you charge them, ah, do not charge it with the high prices, the exorbitant na mga charges. No, kung pwede gani, ulay bayad. Pwede gani ni mo ino, ikaw ulay bo, kana kalipay lang ni mo. Ana, because you learn to put your hope and trust in the Lord for your day-to-day living. Ana, most people, ninety-nine percent sa mga tao maningil mga nasa sila. Ikaw ran tung tao ng dia sa inyong neighborhood sa servisyo ni mo tanan libre. Oh, asa ka kita ana? Di ba? Huwag aga pabayan, di ba? Doktor ka, huwag aga pabayan. Suko na ubang doktor ni mo kasuhan taka. Ana gani? Di ba? Lawyer ka, wala ka kapabayad. Hindi ah, malipay yung Supreme Court sa imuha. Engineer ka, di ka mag-charge sa imuhang kahago. Kinsa may nagahimu ka na, be? Be? One in a million na siguro. Because this world has already been swallowed by commercialism, by materialism. People are very particular with money. They chase after money. They're willing to break relationships because of money. Even brothers will fight over money. They will forget that they're brothers. Ingana siya ka deadly, di ba? That's why they bite one another. You keep on biting and devouring each other. Watch out, you will be destroyed. 
But if we follow the way of the Lord, which is the way of faith expressing itself in love, pagkanindot siya mga idoon. Pagkanindot siya ba? Nag-worship ka kay love ni mo si Lord, dili kay obligasyon ni mo sa inyong relihiyon kay Domingo yun inyong isimba mo nang nag add ka Domingo yun. Add to ka atong lugar ng inyong inyong gipuan tawag og simbahan kalimot ka nga tanang adlaw iya kay Lord nga baday adlaw hinimo ang yawa wa man tanang adlaw hinimo mana sa Ginoo ah. you go in a day in a time you meet with some people you agree together even just three four of you worship the Lord you can sing you can clap your hands whatever you can eat <laughs> Remember Colossians 3.17 Whatever you do in word and in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the Father, to Him. Giving praise. The same as yeah. Giving worship. The same. Okay, John. Hallelujah. And so, God has already given you the freedom. Ayaw tuguti ng uban din na mag-judge-judge ay muha kay muna, mukaon, kabisagunsa, you want to eat any kind, every kind, please do so. Oh. Na kung ang Kristiyano maglikay sa obang pagkaon for dietary, dietary reason na, wala na ilabot sa kaluwasan ni Mo. Oh. Ayaw pagtuwa na mayingon sila, mukha kong kagbaboy, may interno ka. Kung ang baboy man lang ang makaluwas ni Mo, di, di na mo anis Kristo. Wala na ni Kristo ni Anhi para namatay sa cross, luwason ka. Maluwas man di ka kung di ka mukhaog baboy. Wala na lang ka ni kaog baboy para maluwas ka. Mga mantoy mong kaluwasan ng baboy. Baboy ang kaluwasan ni mo. Adlaw ang imong kaluwasan. Adlaw. Ang simbang Domingo di maluwas. Mwah! Mga religious, mga nang interpretation, mga egzoon. You can never find that in the life of Jesus. You can never find that in the lives of the apostles. God is looking for those who worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Mga nang requirements, samahan. Mag-worship ganit ka, spirit and truth, ang pangitaon. Dili ang adlaw, dili ang lugar, dili ang ritual, dili ang ceremony. Dili ang uniform. Mahalun ka yung imong inasulog pag simba, pero tikasan kay kang dako. Limbong aros pag yun ka. Purakot pa dyan. Mga na isimba ni mo. Tilan. Balik ko na ko, ang kagawasan, dili gamiton na lisensya sa paghimo o sala. Itagaan tag kagawasan, oo. Pero dili apil ang kagawasan sa paghimog sala. <laughs> ang sala, makadaot yun na siya, magguba yun na yung inabuyana, mapunta ka sa impyerno, ana, kung sige yun yung pagbuhat. Muna nga, ang Kristiyano may kagawasan siya. The Spirit of God will lead him. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sa Roma 8, so 15, the city. Wala Holy Spirit nang magiya sa iyo. Siyempre, according to the word, basis is the word. No, ang pulong sa ginuman ay mga guidelines. Sundo nga. Na ikaw galamiton ka ni Lord. May kagawasan na ka nga gamiton ni Lord. Gamiton ka pagpalapad sa gingharian ni Lord. Himong ba-ba, kabot, tiil, everything of you. Mahimong powerful instrument in the hand of the Lord. God will use you. Because the Spirit now lives in you. The Spirit is the power of God and through the anointing of the Spirit, things will, hap will happen. Powerful things will happen for the glory of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Grabe. May kagawasan na kang maminaw kay Holy Spirit. And obey. Ang sa itong iya mga prompting. Act on them. Gladly, joyfully. You are never forced by the Spirit. The Spirit God forces no one. But He prompts us, He prompts us, He encourages us. Hallelujah. He nudges us, He whispers in our ears. 
He inspires us, but not forced, not coerced. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we do things out of obedience to the Spirit of God, grabing kalipay sa itong amahan nga sa langit, and also miraculous things will happen for the glory of our glorious Savior. Pagampo ko nga, masabta na ito ang tanan, then kinabuhi ko na ito kadadlaw. No? Ang freedom. Yan na bato na na ito diya kang Kristo. Father, thank you, Gayo, for the freedom we received through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has come to set us free and He is expecting us to live our life in freedom. Freedom from the works of the evil one, freedom from bondage, freedom from fear, freedom from religion, freedom from whatever it is that has bounded before and caused a lot of guilt and shame sa mong inabuhi. Now in the Lord Jesus Christ, may the mercy and grace poured out by the Father on us, we can live a free life through the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This will be powerful, glorious, impactful, attractful. People will see the freedom that we have. And they cannot figure it out why we have so much joy. Why we have so much excitement. When they see at the same time the difficulty and hardship that we are going through. And yet they see the joy, the excitement. There is a spring on our feet. Hallelujah. Salamat kay Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are our joy. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have freedom from you and in you and through you. We have peace and joy in you and through you. Now, as we live this life every day, may mo kaming dispensers of peace, and joy and righteousness and many many more fruit of the spirit ma distribute namo ma dispense namo ngadto sa mga nanginangla many will partake of the fruit of the spirit and find their way back at the feet of Jesus for their salvation and for their deliverance salamat kay the lord holy spirit thank you for your wonderful glorious work our human mind can never fathom the depths, hallelujah, of what is in you and what you have for your people. Salamat kay Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.